And we'll start things off with Julian Edelman. Did he test positive for a substance we don't even know about? <laughs> well, yeah, the, the, the <laughs> positive test was for an unknown PED, which my question is, is Cam, if it's unknown, how does it trigger it? Yeah, like, like I, 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 I just, so four heads on this one, and I, I'm, sh I'm not super familiar with drug testing because it's never been an issue for me. <laughs> but good to hear. Good to hear, thank you. Like, I am surprised that something can trigger a positive result and you don't know what triggered it. Right. So that's really weird for me and some other notes that we'll make note of here from Albert Breer with, with SI.com and the Monday Morning Quarterback was that this happened during the off season so it's not any kind of stimulant. So if, if a player, for example, is taking Adderall during the actual season, that's when it, it, they've changed the rules. So any type of off-season use of Adderall, if you don't have a subscription, of course, sure. uh, or per, uh, prescription, it falls under substance abuse, not PEDs. If it's during the season, it falls under PEDs. So it's not Adderall or anything like that. It actually was some type of performance enhancing and drug. They just don't know what it was. So they're still testing really right now. Really weird, which makes me think maybe Edelman does have a good case to actually win this. Because if they, if they just say, we don't know what it was, but it, but it got flagged. <laughs> Can't like, you just see the NFL being like, I don't know what that, that is, but that's bad. Yeah. Four games. <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me. And well, Edelman is, of course, appealing that four game yeah. suspension. So we'll see what happens in regards to yeah. that. So four heads there on an unknown PED with Julian Edelman. All right, let's take a look at the next rumor on the list here, and we thank Man Crates for showing us this one. Zach Martin, a contract extension. Tom, what do we know? Four heads. It's not quite pen to paper, but it is a done deal. Zach Martin has, or has more or less agreed to, not officially signed, a massive deal with the Dallas Cowboys, and a well-earned one as well. It is a six-year extension. It's going to make Zach Martin the highest paid offensive guard in the NFL, he's going to be the third highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL behind some tackles. So a lot of money for Zach Martin. I think it is a well-deserved deal for Zach Martin. We'll kind of go through what this deal could look like. We'll start off with some of the other highest paid offensive guards in the NFL. There are a lot of notable ones that we've seen thus far. So we'll, we'll kind of take you through a couple of these here. Among the guards, based on the per year salary, Andrew Norwell kind of broke it. He, he cashed with, out. He went up in a big way, 13.3. Normally you see teams and players, hey, we'll give you 12.1. We'll give you 12.2, just a little bit more, just to say you're the highest paid guy, but we're not going to break the bank. Jags didn't do that with Andrew Norwell. So the 13.3 million per year, that's kind of the baseline for what Martin's going to get per year. Based on highest paid guards in the NFL guaranteed wise, this is based on the practical guarantees. So technically, based on guaranteed it's signing, it is Andrew Norwell. But Zeitler had part of his uh, second and third years guaranteed back last year. So they weren't guaranteed it's signing, but there was zero chance the Browns would cut him because they would have eaten more dead money. So it didn't make sense not to do it that way. So 31.5. So with that in mind, the deal for Zach Martin is reportedly worth more than $80 million overall 30 plus million guaranteed. So, Cam, you're looking at a record breaking deal here for Zach Martin and the Cowboys and a very well deserved one as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was the number one guard, according to Pro Football Focus, last year. He was ahead of David DeCastro in Norwell, who we talked about, Brandon Brooks in Philadelphia, Josh Sitton, who's mm -hmm. now a member of the Miami Dolphins. You look at Zach Martin, Tom, and mm -hmm. Ultimate Stonewaller in pass protection, fantastic road grader. You know what? I wanted to bring up a scenario scenario with you here. Okay. If it was a one-on-one -on -one drill, okay? So Dak is the quarterback. Okay. Zach Martin is the protector, and I'm rushing Dak. Would I ever get to Dak Prescott? Like you, if I had all the time in the world? You, no, because you'd be on your back consistently. <laughs> like you, you would. He would put one hand on you, and you would go flying. <laughs> Like, like, to the extent it looks like a movie where they're pulling you back with, with the green screen rope there. I'd never make it. Unreal. So, probably for Zach Martin, looking at around a year, $6 million, eight, 81 million or so. I had guessed earlier today before those deals that he does come out, I had guessed six years, 32 and 80.5. I think that's around where we're going to end up getting here with Zach Martin. But a massive deal for Martin and a well-deserved one, just in times for OTAs and the Cowboys as well. Absolutely. Great timing at that. So, Zach Martin getting paid, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to rumor number three on the list is Earl Thomas holding out. Tom, four heads here. He's doing it. It's official, and this is a big deal for the Seahawks because 
they're kind of an interesting spot because Earl Thomas has made it pretty clear he wants to get paid. And I will always respect players who want to do that, especially when you're in the last year of your deal. And Earl Thomas, as of right now, Cam, is not a top five highest paid safety in the NFL, which is weird, right? It's interesting. Cam Chancellor's making more than right. Earl Thomas. Now, the Seahawks had said, oh, he's not going to sit out, which we know is clearly not the case anymore. So it's going to cost probably $13 million a year to land Earl Thomas around that Eric Berry mark. You know, Joyner is there on the tag. Harrison Smith is now all of a sudden a very team-friendly deal at safety. Honestly. Rashad Jones, not so much. Chancellor, his future is in doubt. So all of a sudden, the Seahawks, if they lose Earl Thomas, Cam, they have lost a ton at safety. Or at their defense overall, Cliff Averill is, 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 is gone. You know, Michael Bennett is gone. Mm -hmm. Sherman's gone. Richardson. Chancellor is a big question mark. Richardson is gone. All of a sudden, you lost half your starting defense there. So Earl Thomas's future, because of this whole run, he's made it very clear he just wants to get paid. And it seems like Seattle and Thomas are at very differing points with where they sit right now with their overall, all overall marks with what their future looks like right If now. you were general manager John Schneider, you were either really PO'd because Schneider told everybody that the Thomas camp told him that he was not holding out. Or Schneider lied to the entire media to kind of, I guess, speak it into existence that Earl Thomas Maybe would not hold out. Maybe he wanted to believe that it, Earl, that that could Earl be Thomas it. was not going to hold out. But let me tell you, the Seattle Seahawks leadership cannot screw this up, Tom. They have to figure this out because if the yeah. Seattle Seahawks go into 2019 with no extension for Earl Thomas, Hello, Cowboys. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Oh, yeah. And if they lose Earl Thomas, they're only going to get a third-round pick back in exchange via the, the supplemental draft. Mm -hmm. Or not supplemental draft, excuse me, the, the compensatory picks there. I got my mind on, on uh, supplemental draft coming up later. <laughs> of course. They're actually players here, draft and I'm excited. Maniac there. There are actually decent players here, and I'm excited. Calm excuse down, me. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> only the best. All right, so who are the top five teams that could trade for Earl Thomas? We've got our list after a short word from our friends at Man Crates. Man crates, awesome gifts for men in real wooden crates, wrapped in a cocoon of duct tape, or housed in ammo cans that are virtually indestructible. Some gifts he'll get to assemble himself, some gifts you'll beg him to share, and some gifts are sealed inside layers of rock-solid concrete. Gifts guys love, from grilling gear to old-school video games and more. Man crates, awesome gifts. Let's continue on with our NFL rumors here and talk about head coach Matt Patricia. Is he already losing players in the locker room, Tom? We're giving it one Goodell head here, and I did not allow you to give it yeah, fake news. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that you said it was okay. So wh why do you think it's just the one head, Cam? Or well, I should say one head. The rumor trust. is that Patricia is losing the locker room due to his punishments of extreme sprints and running. He and made them run. <laughs> oh, no. He made them get in shape. <laughs> All that stuff. So, Tom, let's keep in mind, this guy is a first-year head coach and also a protege of the Bill Belichick regime. And we have seen it before where the Bill Belichick coaching tree has not worked out very well. Now, with Matt Patricia here, I worry, and by the way, I wasn't a fan of this hire. Like, he was one of my lower-ranked hires I was fine with going it. into the offseason here. Um, that Matt Patricia, I think, tends to be Bill Belichick 2.0 at fair. times. That's fair, and that's not always the most popular thing. And it's not I the most that. popular thing, and you've seen it with the Patriots right now, how there's some friction going on within the Patriots' leadership and some of the players there, but I digress on that. So let's keep in mind that Matt Patricia is a rookie. The Bill Belichick projects don't pan out very well. And, and I'm just throwing this on here as maybe gravy to all of this, there's still the sexual assault allegations that could be top of mind with some of these players, Tom. I'm not saying they are, Look, but it's possible. That is fine. That was not mentioned in this column from the Detroit Free Press, which, by the way, Totally took a quote from Carryon Johnson out of context, and they had to edit the article and say, hey, we clarify the quote. The quote was from Johnson was that these are true pros. These are grown men, 30, 35, 25. The column made it sound like that Johnson was complaining. Right. He was talking about the talent level difference. Oh. It was completely different. That's why I wanted his fake news. I don't think he's losing his players anytime soon. All right, so that's the opinion piece out there from the Detroit Free Press. One Goodell head on that rumor. Yeah. Let's go to the next rumor on the list. Is Des Bryant headed to the Jacksonville Jaguars? One Goodell head here. 
This coming from Jalen Ramsey. He's trying to recruit him. Had they not signed Dante Moncrief, I think this is where Des Bryant would have ended up. Really? I think it makes a ton of sense. It's a contending team, and that Jaguars wide receiver core, it's not that good, Cam. Marquise Lee, Dante Moncrief, you got some burners in D.D. Westbrook and D.J. Shark. With all those guys there now, I don't think it makes a ton of sense. But had they not signed Moncrief, or had Des been a preacher from the beginning, I think it would have made a lot of sense. I mean, they paid Dante Moncrief a lot, almost ten million. <laughs> I would have so quickly swapped out Dante for Des and said, "Boom, I'm pumped now." The Je- I know not all you guys like Des Bryant. Dante Moncrief has been a year away for five straight years now. Like every year, it's like, "Oh, Dante Moncrief, next year's the year." That it's he happening this out. year, Tom. Well, Just you're so you paying know. him like he's going to be a top 15 receiver. Hey, I have a lot of faith in this guy. I think he's got a uh, lot go of talent. Go for it. Blake Bortles is your quarterback. Have fun. Be sure to let us know what the best team is for Des Bryant out there. I'll tell you what, the Jags have the ultimate wide receiver number two depth chart. You rattle them off a little That's bit. That's great. That's a great way to put it. D.D. Westbrook, Mark Easley, Dante, Dante Moncrief, DJ Shark. These guys are wide. These are wide two. Type of receivers. I'm stealing here. that line from you going forward. Oh yeah, I ultimate, thought you'd like that. Ultimate number two wide receiver depth chart. Absolutely, I love it. that's the way it is with the Jacksonville Jaguars. All <laughs> right, so there you go, folks. Be sure to let us know in comments about Des Bryant and his future. You guys are watching NFL Daily, presented by Man Crates. Head on to mancrates.com to get the awesome Grill Master Crate for the summer. There's no quicker way to separate the men from the boys <laughs> than to observe how they manage a steak on the grill. The Grill Master Crate is for the man who's a cool operator whenever the heat is high. Hey, I love this crate. I'm moving out of my apartment into a, into a nice new house, and this crate has been purchased alongside my nice new grill. Got the brass knuckle meat tenderizer, a smoker box, oh, yeah. four steak thermometers, dried hickory wood chips, everything you want there. My grill game is here with this crate. It's going up to here, baby. All right, the folks. ceiling is the roof with this crate cam. You gotta love it. Mancrates.com, awesome gifts guys love bringing you NFL Daily today. Next rumor here, Des Bryant to the Titans. Well, Delaney Walker wants it. I think it makes more sense than you want to give it credit mm. for, Cam. I think it makes more sense than, than you seem to think. One head here. Take a look at the depth okay. chart in theory with the Titans. They've invested a lot in their wide receivers. Corey Davis. More specifically, they have Tajay yeah. Sharp as well. Rashard Matthews is there. See, if you're throwing out Tajay Sharp, hey, I'm there's just a saying, reason why. I'm just can't saying. Do it. Taewon Taylor, a high draft pick as well. I, why and, get Des Bryant? Because he's better than Rashard Matthews. He's Eric Decker, like the same guy. But he's better than Eric Decker. Uh, he can I be used know. in the same way as a nice red zone threat. So this depth chart, Corey Davis and Dez, Taylor, Rashard Matthews, Tajay Sharp, whatever with Camp and Aaron, the rest of these guys, even though I do like uh, Deontay Burnett, as a, as a potential undrafted free agent stud there. But I think if you're the Titans and you bring in Des Bryant, if you can handle that in, in the locker room, it's a really good wide receiver core all of a Right now it's like solid to average. Mm-hmm. You bring in Des upside-wise, it's a really good group right now. They got the salary cap yeah. space to do it. So maybe, maybe it could become two heads, three heads. We'll Brad see. Moore says Des back to the Cowboys. It's not happening. That bridge has been nuked from space. It <laughs> will not happen. <laughs> Let's check in with rumor number seven on the list. Is Khalil Mack holding out, Tom? Yeah, he is. And this is now holdout central here on the, for the rest of the no show doubt. here. Yeah, Khalil Mack's not going to show up to, to, to minicamp, and it does make sense for, from his perspective. Yeah, he's going to have to pay the fine. Once he gets his big, fat new contract, it's not going to be an issue anymore. And Khalil Mack wants to be the highest-paid player in the NFL among defensive players. I should qualify that. And you know what? He deserves it. The question is, Cam, who gets paid first, Aaron Donald or Khalil Mack? Well, that's the big question. And that's why if I'm the Raiders, I'm paying Khalil Mack right now because I want to get him locked up before Donald sets the new high mark. And we know the Rams want to make him the highest played defender yeah. in the league. Yeah, so. so, I mean, you're looking at, I think in reality, if you want to get it locked up, the simple way to go about it, five years, $100 million, $71 million guaranteed, or around there. Mm-hmm. That'll get it done. Sure. And I think Khalil Mack's worth that because he is one of the best editors in the NFL, and there's no arguing that. He's incredible. He makes that defense go. He's had very little help on that defense. So no far. doubt. Bruce Irvin, you kidding me? Tank Carradine, they signed him. P.J. Hall is there as well. well you're not, Tank Carradine is the reason why. Yeah. That's why you go get somebody else out there. 
Be sure to let us know about those Oakland Raiders. Will they be a playoff team in 2018? Let us know in the comments section on Facebook Live and AFC YouTube. West is wide open. The Raiders will be making a push there. Of course, we'll see how they handle the film acting. The thing for me is, don't let this drag out. Just yeah, get it done. Absolutely. Even though it's easier said than done. All right, you mentioned it. We're in the holdout portion oh, yeah. of the rumors here. Julio Jones, four aheads, Tom. The Atlanta Falcons announced it. He won't be at mandatory minicamp. So maybe there is a bit more going on about with Julio Jones than we had thought. I, I, there I think we got some comments that said it, it, it wasn't a holdout with Julio Jones, and that he didn't want a new contract. Clearly, he does, he does want a new contract. So the Falcons announced it, and it's, and it's an interesting spot here for Julio Jones. And this is why, more so than the Cleo Mack, who is going to win that, that negotiation because he's going to get a big, fat new contract, Julio Jones' contract isn't up. Now, Julio Jones is definitely underpaid. Look, he's not a top five wide receiver. He is in guaranteed money, but not in a per year value. Here's the problem with Julio Jones. Yeah, he's not making top five per year money, Cam, but he's got three years left on his deal. Mm -hmm. NFL teams don't redo contracts with three years left. Uh, that's a long that's time. That's not something that gets done. Now, what they could try to do is throw in some more incentives, kind of like the Patriots have done with Rob Gronkowski. But to get a brand new contract, that's not going to happen for Julio Jones. He's going to make about 10.5 in base salary this year, $12.9 million cap hit. That's not a lot for Julio Jones, but they're not going to get a new deal. Like, I, I would be surprised if that happened because three years left, that does not happen in the NFL. So we'll see what happens there. But this is the one I'm going to monitor the most because it's the one of the grouping I think we have right now could turn the most hostile if Julio Jones really wants a new deal because I don't think Atlanta's going to do it. There's just no way with, th with three years left. All right, so Julio Jones hold out four heads there. Finally here on the rumor list, are we staring at an Odell Beckham Jr. versus Giants showdown? Two heads firmly in the rumor category, Tom. I'm glad we gave it two heads because it, there is some reason to think why, yeah, it's going to head to a, a new thing, or I guess just the one head there. I guess it makes sense on that end, but what I do question, Cam, is, is this just New York media? Like, is this just the be. New York media hyping it up because they always do that? Because he's going to show up at, at minicamp, so he's not holding out. So I don't know if we're actually going to have this bad outcome where the Giants and Beckham end up hating each other because everyone keeps saying, at least the New York media keeps saying, hey, it's going to be an issue, but they haven't really fought yet. Like, they've been fine. Beckham's been showing up as needed at various points. He's going to show up to minicamp, apparently. Now, if he doesn't go to minicamp, maybe we change things. But with the injury and all that, maybe, maybe that'll be an issue. But I think that they're fine right now. I don't think this is even at a Julio stage yet. No, so definitely I'm, I'm, not. I'm glad it's just the one head. Okay. things seem fine right now, plain and simple. The Odell situation worth monitoring here on NFL Daily, presented by Man Crates. Be sure to check out mancrates.com. Four awesome gifts guys love this Father's Day.